What is up guys, how are we all doing? Welcome to a new video. In this episode, we're gonna get our NPC to detect us, chase us, and draw and sheath his weapon. This tutorial is a direct follow-on from my previous AI tutorial, so be sure to watch that one before watching this one. Before we start this video, I wanna quickly say thank you to all my Patreons for supporting me. I try to help all my subscribers, but if you would like access to some of the exclusive rewards seen on screen now, please check out my Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description. Okay, let's get into this video. In the last episode, we set up a patrolling sequence, and today we're gonna create another sequence which allows our NPC to chase us. So, make sure you've opened up your behavior tree. Then we're gonna duplicate our send to location node. This task sends the NPC to a location, so we can use it to send our NPC to our player location. Back into our content folder, we're gonna duplicate our get spline location task. Call this get player location. Double click to open it up, and we're gonna delete everything but our blackboard nodes. Then we're gonna get the player character, get actor location, and plug this into our blackboard. So just like the last episode, we've sent our location over to the blackboard, but this time our player location, not the spline location. Close this and go back to our behavior tree. Bring in our find player location task we just made and put it in before our send to location. Click on the get player location and make sure it's updating the target location. And lastly, let's add a cooldown to this sequence so the event has a pause between each fire. If we don't do this, the NPC will be spammed and his movements will glitch out. So right click on our sequence, add decorator and select cooldown. I'm gonna set this value to 0.2. So a decorator is basically a feature we can add on to our nodes to change them slightly. Don't worry, you'll learn the different ones over time. So this is everything we need to get our NPC to chase us. But how do we swap between the patrolling and chasing sequences? We do this with a variable. So into our blackboard, let's create a bool variable called can see player question mark. Back into our tree, let's add another decorator onto our sequence and this time add the blackboard one. In the details, set this as our can see player variable and then we're gonna set observer aborts to both. This basically just tells the program to stop running the sequence when the variable changes. Now, copy paste the can see player over to the other sequence by selecting it, pressing Ctrl C, then selecting the other sequence and Ctrl V to paste it. Now, if you haven't already, connect everything up so we have our patrol sequence on our left side and our chase player on our right. Now we can flick between these tasks depending on our variable can see player. We want to run our patrolling sequence when we can't see the player. So in the details, set this to is not set, AKA is false. Then for the chasing player sequence, in the details section, put can see player to is set, aka is true. Okay, so now we just need a way to update our can see player variable. And we want to do this quite literally when the NPC can see the player. So let's jump into our third person blueprint. Add a AI perception stimuli source. Then in the details section, let's add an array element to this and select AI sense underscore site. By adding this, we have now made our third person character detectable. For the NPC to actually detect a character by seeing or hearing them, the character must have AI perception added. Now, let's enable perception from the NPC side. So jump into the NPC underscore AI. In the viewport, add an AI perception node. In the details, add a perception array element and add the AI site config. Let's take a look at the details. So the peripheral vision is the angle at which the NPC can detect you. I'm just gonna leave this at 90 degrees for now. Then we're gonna enable detection by enemies, neutrals, and friendlies. I haven't really looked into these settings very much, but our NPC won't detect our character without these toggled on. Now, in the event graph, we're gonna bring in a on-target perception updated node. So this will trigger when our NPC detects something. Then bring in a get blackboard node, You'll notice we don't need to reference our blackboard, and that's because we've already told our controller to run the behavior tree, which is directly linked to it. Off our blackboard, we're gonna set value as bool. Pull off the key name and bring in a make literal name node. 
and type in here your variable name. Mine was can see player question mark. Then off the stimulus on the event, we're gonna pull off this and break it. Then plug the successfully sensed into the set value as bool node. So when the NPC detects us, we're gonna change the can see player bool in the blackboard to true or false, depending if we're detected or undetected. So as our can see player node is now being updated, when you press play, your NPC will chase you when he sees you and patrols when he can't. Now we just have two more things to do. The first is to stop the patrol location from moving when we're chasing the player. And the second is to get the NPC to draw his sword when he detects us. So let's jump into our patrol path and create two custom events. Call these pause and continue. Plug the continue into play and pause into stop. So pretty obvious, when called, these events will pause and continue our timeline, which will pause and continue our spline location from moving. We only want to be able to call our continue event if the NPC is back in position. So let's create a way to track this. In the viewport, we're gonna add a sphere collision and attach it to the cube we've got moving around our spline. In the event graph, with the sphere selected, we're gonna bring in a on component begin overlap and a on component end overlap. Now create a bool variable called overlapping NPC. Off the component begin overlap, bring in a cast to NPC, then alt drag in our overlapping NPC variable and set it to true. Connect all these up, then select both of these and control W to duplicate for our end overlap. And this time set overlapping NPC to false. So now, when our NPC chases us and returns back to the spline track, we now have an updated bool variable to detect these changes. Now into the content folder. Duplicate our getSpline location task twice. Call one pause path and call the other one continue path. Open up the pause path and we're simply going to delete the set blackboard and off the spline ref we're going to call the event pause. Now for the continue path, we're going to do the exact same thing, but only continue the track when our NPC is back in position. And as we created a variable in our spline to track this, we can use the variable. So bring in our overlapping NPC variable, connect it up to a branch, and on the true, we're going to continue our track, and on the false, we're going to end our task. Let's quickly add these to our behavior tree. So bring in our pause path and plug it in on the end of our chase player sequence. Then bring in our continue path and plug it in at the end of our patrol sequence. And that is done. Now this is the part where you will either have had to follow on from my previous tutorials, downloaded my project, or have some of your own draw weapon methods as I mentioned in the last episode. So double click to open your NPC. Let's begin by tidying some things up. People who don't have these nodes, just bear with me, we'll get back to what's essential in a minute. So let's delete all the movement controls that our third person character uses, and let's delete our interact with weapon nodes. Then we're gonna delete our left and right mouse button events, as obviously our NPC isn't being controlled by us anymore. Then we're gonna delete the attack connection, delete the is valid nodes, and reconnect our weapon drawn branch. Okay, so for people who have followed along, you should have exactly the same blueprints as me. For anyone doing it their own way, you'll use the same method we use, but for your own draw weapon nodes. So let's create two custom events, one called draw weapon and the other called sheath weapon. Let's connect these up to our draw and sheath weapon where our mouse events were. It's important to mention for people who are implementing their own methods that you'll need a bool variable called weapon drawn which is set to true when your weapon is drawn and false for when it's sheathed. We've already got this. Now, as we're no longer picking up a weapon, we need to manually put one on our NPC. So into the viewport, let's add a static mesh and add our weapon. For anyone who's not been following along, you can download this weapon in my draw weapon tutorial. I'll leave a link in the description. Now back into the event graph, control drag in our weapon and bring in a event begin play node. Then pull off our weapon and create a attach component to component node. Make sure you select the second one down. Then control drag in our mesh and plug this into the parent. Then for the options, for location, we're gonna snap the target, 
For rotation, we're going to snap to target. And for scale, we're going to keep relative. For the socket name, we're going to use the socket we created in our pickup weapon tutorial called weapon underscore back. If you don't have a socket and you don't know how to create one, I'll leave a link in the description to my tutorial which shows you how to do this. Then for our events which actually attach our sword to our NPC's hand and back, we need to change equipped weapon to our newly made weapon. Unreal is annoying and we can't just swap the target over, so let's duplicate our attached component we just made twice, then copy all the settings from our draw and sheath sword attached to component nodes over to our new ones. Then we can swap these in. Okay, cool. So we've attached our weapon to our NPC as we're no longer picking it up. And then we've created events to draw and sheath our weapon. Let's call these now. So into our content folder, duplicate our get spline location and call this task draw weapon. Double click to open this up. Then delete everything except the cast to NPC. Pull off this and get our weapon drawn variable. Bring in a branch with B and click and connect these up. Then off our NPC again, we're gonna call the draw weapon event we made, coming off the false. And then plug the true into the end task. Now close this, duplicate it and call this new task sheath weapon. This time, pull off our NPC and bring in our sheath weapon event. Connect this up coming off the true and then plug the false into ending our task. Now into the behavior tree, let's add our draw and sheath weapon tasks. Plug the draw weapon into our chase player sequence and the sheath weapon into our patrol sequence. And that is everything guys. You'll notice that the NPC is a bit glitchy when he gets to your character, but don't worry, we'll be sorting that out in the upcoming video. So guys, let's do a rundown of our behavior tree. We have a selector node, which selects one of our two sequences. As we added a bool variable to our sequences, the path we go down depends on if our cancy player is true or false. If cancy player is true, we go down our chase player path, where our sequence pauses the spline path from moving, gets the player location, sends the NPC to that location, and then draws the NPC's sword if it's not already drawn. This is repeated until Cansey player changes. If Cansey player is false, we go down our patrol path, where our sequence sheaths the NPC's weapon if it's drawn, gets the spline location, sends the NPC to that location, and continues the spline movement when the NPC is back in position. This is repeated until Cansey player changes again. Our Cansey player variable changes when our NPC gains and loses sight of our character. This was done by adding AI perception to our third person blueprint and our NPC's AI controller. In the next tutorial, we get our NPC to use attacks on us. If you would like to see that tutorial this very second, head over to my Patreon and get that early access. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Peace!